Hello everyone, my name is Florian Massip. I'm a researcher at the Center for Computational Biology at Mint Paris and Institut Curie. And today I'm going to present the work I did in collaboration with scientists in Cancer Research UK in Cambridge, Papua Royal Hospital, and in Bimsby in Berlin. The goal of this work was to assess the risk of lung cancer from nasal epithelium and transcriptomic data taken from nasal epithelium. So, So as you all know, smoking is the main risk factor for lung cancer. And actually 85% of lung cancer are smoking related. The risk of uh, getting a lung cancer is much higher in people who continue smoking all their life, but it's also much higher in people who stop smoking, even at the early stage of their life. So this risk remains much higher even if people who stop smoking recently as compared to never smoked her. Indeed, uh, more than 50% of lung cancer occur in ex-smokers, and the mechanisms of onset of lung cancer in this population are not so well understood, making it very interesting to study. In addition to that, lung cancer is often diagnosed at very late stages. So, over 75% of lung cancer are diagnosed at stages three and four, which is much later than most of the other cancer. In addition, when it's diagnosed at late stages, lung cancer is very deadly, with a prognosis at five years, which is less than 10%. Survival. The prognosis is still bad at, uh, when it's diagnosed at early stages, but it's much better. So why is lung cancer diagnosed so late? Because the diagnostic tools that we have at hand are very invasive. The main diagnostic tool that we have is bronchioscopy and requires to sample tissue from the lung of the patients and is thus very invasive. So this diagnostic tool cannot be applied to people for which we don't have a high suspicion of lung cancer. So there is a high need for uh, early diagnostic tools that would be non-invasive. Recently, it's been shown that cigarette smoke creates a field of injury all along the, the airway with the smoke that you, because the smoke that you inhale when you smoke a cigarette goes to your lung, make damages in your lung, but also goes to your nose and your, and your mouth uh, and makes the same damages in the lung and in the nose. So based on this fact, uh, there has been a year developed that we could use nasal sample as a surrogate for bronchial to try to assess the lung cancer risk from a non-even invasive tissue. So the aim of this study was to first characterize the long-term smoke injury response in the patient, uh, to, to assess whether we could assess the lung cancer risk from a nasal epithelium data, and to try to better understand the lung cancer of the mechanisms. To do that, we collected um, a, a rich cohort of roughly 500 subjects. Subjects were, were separated into three groups, healthy volunteer with no history of lung diseases, clinic patients, which were patients which were sent to the clinic for suspicion of lung cancer, and cancer patients, which were uh, patients uh, which were diagnosed with lung cancer. So the clinic patients benign were patients which were sent to the clinic for suspicion of lung cancer, but which actually turned out not to have lung cancer. For this, for, for this subject, we collected nasal sample and conducted RNA sequencing. For the patient, we also collected a bronchoscopy, but not for the healthy volunteer, of course. For all subjects, we also collected blood samples to uh, to SNP rate in typing and uh, to get uh, a hand on their genotype background. We also collected precise smoking information on this subject and grouped our patient into, into five groups, never smoker, uh, ex-smoker with different uh, smoking cessation dates, so people who stopped smoking a long time ago, more than 12 months ago, people who stopped smoking more recently, and people who were still smoking. 
coherent smoker at the time to be very interesting. So in this in this talk, I'm mostly going to talk about uh, describe data analysis on the nasal sample. So the first thing we tried to do with nasal sample was to try to assess to characterize the smoke injury response. For that, we used uh, a simple model and uh, with three main factors, the XDS, which uh, characterize the difference between never smoker and current smoker, XFS, which characterize the difference between never smoker and ex smoker, and XTQ, which characterize the difference between the different category of ex smoker. So without going too much in the detail of the, the method, we applied the model on all genes uh, to try to classify genes into several categories. So genes that we call rapidly reversible, which are genes which are affected by smoke and are different in current smoker as compared to all the rest. But it's the same with the question is the same in never smoker and in all the categories of ex smoker. So after people stop smoking, these genes goes back to normal very rapidly and is the same in all categories of ex smoker and never smoker. We have genes which, were, which are called slowly reversible. For those genes, the different, the, we have a difference in expression between the current smoker and the never smoker, and the ex smoker are in between. And the people who stopped smoking the, a long time ago resembles a lot the never smoker, while the ex smoker resembles a lot the, the current smoker, smoker who stopped recently. We also identify genes which we call irreversible so for those genes the expression in the never and in current smoker is largely different but the expression in the current smoker is the same as in the ex smoker so even after smoking cessation these genes remain at and never go back to normal finally we have a category of genes which we call cessation induced which are different between which are the same in the never smoker and the current smoker but have a different expression in the ex smoker specifically So depending on which uh, parameter of the model was significant, significant, we could classify genes. And uh, so these are just a few results. In C1A1, for instance, is classified as rapidly reversible because it's very different between current smoker and all the rest of the, of the subject. This one is slowly reversible, and this one is irreversible because it's very different in the never compared to all the rest. So using this model, uh, we apply this model on, on only the LC volunteer subjects first, and we could find that 500 genes were smoke injury genes, and among them, the vast majority were rapidly reversible genes. We then applied the same model on the clinic group, and we found that 600 genes were smoke injury response. <laughs> and in contrast to the LC volunteer, the, the genes at the some genes were rapidly reversible, which we also identified a hundred genes which were slowly reversible and hundreds which were irreversible. These genes are good candidates for being important in the difference between clinic group and healthy volunteer, and in particular uh, could explain why people remain at risk of getting cancer even long time after smoking cessation. We then conducted a goal-term analysis to try to characterize the function which were affected by the smoking injury. And we, could, we found from some uh, affectation which were really coherent with literature, so the organization, extracellular matrix organization, which we also found uh, very interestingly uh, that genes related to immune response were um, affected by smoke and that the effect of the affectation was much stronger in the clinic patient as compared to the, to the healthy volunteer. In particular, we could identify some genes which were irreversible or slowly reversible only in the clinic group, showing that uh, the impaired immunity play a role in the, in the onset of lung cancer in these patients. So having identified that, uh, we then turn to our next question, which is try to 
was to try to assess the lung cancer risk from this transcriptomic data. For that, we first identified genes which had different dynamics between the healthy volunteer and the clinic group, and we found 749 genes which had different reversibility classes between the two groups, and which are the good candidates for uh, explaining the difference between the two groups, uh, for characterizing the difference between the two groups. So we decided to use the genes and try to assess the lung cancer risk from, from their expression. So we try to divide two types of tests. The first test, which we call the population test. So we call that we have three populations. So the population test try to differentiate healthy volunteer from the clinic group, whether or not they have cancer. So this is just to identify uh, people at risk of lung cancer. And the clinic test uh, was to try to identify the difference between cancer group and all the rest, clinic and healthy volunteer together, clinic benign and healthy volunteer together. So for the population test, we used a simple penalized logistic regression using this the expression from the 749 genes uh, with, in addition, the clinical covariates, namely sex, age, smoking status, and smoking intensity. Our model identified 40 genes for which the, that were predictive of the, of the status. And using them, we, we uh, derived a score which was very different between the healthy volunteer and the, and the uh, clinic, uh, clinic group, whether or not they have cancer. We show that we can really identify, can really differentiate these two groups using only these, these 40 genes. Uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, the information from the genes was really useful. So we compared our model to a model where we would use only the clinical information, so sex, age, smoking status, and smoking intensity. Uh, and here I show you the rock curve for the clinical only model and here the rock curve our model. So you can see that our model performs much better than a simple uh, clinical model. This is also what you show you will see here. So we computed a cross validation and we show that the gene uh, model with which is gene expression plus clinical information is a much better area under the curve as the one from the from the purely clinical model. We did the same for the, the clinic test, so trying to differentiate cancer patients from, from the rest of the population. And uh, long story short, and this uh, works much less well. So the addition of, there is small addition from the gene expression data, but uh, not, as, not good enough to conduct a, a diagnostic test. So the last thing we wanted to study was to try to understand the mechanisms of lung cancer onset. Uh, and to do that, uh, we used a prescription factor um, model analysis, where we tried to reconstruct the prescription factor network of using our uh, gene expression data. So we did so using a, a tool called Arachnia that you might have heard of. Uh, and uh, we could reconstruct a, a tissue specific uh, transcription factor network. So I will be very fast on this part because I don't have much time left. But what we did was to, was to put on this network the uh, genes that had been previously identified by the other uh, DWAS studies on the network. So these genes are colored in red. Uh, we also put on the network genes which were, which had been identified at smoke injury gene uh, by our analysis. And in green, you see the genes which are both smoke injury genes and GWAS genes. And then we conducted uh, a simple um, enrichment analysis and we identified four transcription factors which were highly enriched for, uh, for either of the two. So for both smoke injury genes and, and GWAS genes. 
And we found that this uh, four transcription factor were also highly related to uh, immune impairment, which again uh, shows that immune impairment plays an important role in, in lung cancer uh, in smokers. So to conclude from my talk, uh, we identified genes that remain altered by smoke even years after smoking cessation. We demonstrated that um, nasal epithelium gene expression data can be used to predict disease status and lung cancer risk, and propose a link between the immune impairment and lung cancer onset. So, uh, so let me acknowledge my collaborator on this project. Uh, Bella de Villad and Ronald Schwartz uh, from Berlin, Claude Markovitz, Bruce Ponder, and Robert Wintour from Cambridge, as well as people from the Schwartz Lab for the helpful discussion. And just before I start, if I have one 30 more seconds, just want to say that we have job opening at the SEBU, uh, either uh, several postdoc opening to do a network analysis on youth data, uh, deep learning for image analysis. Uh, as well as, uh, more importantly, a tenure track position for, so it's just a two year tenure track, uh, after which uh, you get a permanent position. So it's a, a very good opportunity. And uh, contact me if you're interested. I'll be happy to give you information. And uh, thank you for your attention.